Right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things and welcome to another video. And today, just carrying on with my non-Victorian classics theme, I thought I would talk about some of my favourite classics that were written in English but aren't British. I wasn't originally planning on making this, but after I'd been making my um, classics in translation video and my 20th century British classics video, um, I thought of a few other classics that I would like to talk about in some way, most of which were from the US, but a couple of which were Canadian and one New Zealand, so I thought I would make this video, and what I will title it, I do not know. This video is going to be in a very similar structure to the last two. I'm not going to rank these books because there are a few authors where I want to talk about multiple of their books or plays. So I'm just going to go through these authors and tell you about what I've read by them and what I liked. Um, so I will start off with the author from New Zealand, then to go on to the Canadian authors, and then we'll go into the US authors. So the author from New Zealand I wanted to mention is Catherine Mansfield. Um, this is The Garden Party and Other Stories. Catherine Mansfield is an early 20th century short story writer from New Zealand who is absolutely amazing. I have loved everything I've read by her. Her short stories are just amazing. She's one of those writers who writes perfect short stories that just wonderfully capture a moment in time. She's got that real like insight into characters and people's minds which I just absolutely love and yeah I just highly highly recommend her short fiction. If you haven't read anything by Catherine Mansfield I would highly recommend it. Leading on from that if anyone would like to recommend me any other classic writers from New Zealand and Australia I would like that because I haven't read very many at all pretty much just Catherine Mansfield, I think. And there are also two writers from Canada I wanted to mention, both of whom are Canadian short story writers. The first is Mavis Gallant, who is a French-Canadian 20th century short story writer who I just absolutely love. I studied some of her short stories um, at university when I was doing a creative writing MA, um, particularly a collection called Paris Stories, but I think that's sort of a selected works collection rather than that the stories were originally published in that form, if you see what I mean. But Mavis Gallant is a really wonderful writer. I think one of the reasons why we studied her short fiction um, in a module on a creative writing course is because she just does amazing things with the short story as a form. Um, and she often has these stories that just kind of go in a way that you don't really expect and just have these really like wonderfully satisfying arcs. Like it's been a long time since I've read her works, but um, there are certain stories which just stayed with me so much and her characterization and just the way she writes. Her writing is absolutely beautiful and um, just stunning, so I highly, highly recommend Mavis Gallant. And then the other 20th century Canadian short story writer who I really like is Alice Munro. She is an author who I didn't study when I was doing my creative writing masters, but everyone else who I was doing that masters with, who liked short stories, went on about Alice Munro so much. So I read a collection of hers, The Love of a Good Woman, a little while ago and just really, really loved it. I really love her writing um, and I love the way she looks at character relationships. I love the way The Love of a Good Woman looks so powerfully at um, the kind of position of women in mid 20th century society. She's just a truly wonderful writer and one I highly, highly recommend. Then moving into the writers from the USA, um, the first one I want to mention is Louisa May Alcott. She is a mid to late 19th century American writer. I have read um, four of her books, I guess. Um, well, I think four as they were originally published in the UK, but I, I think recently I heard someone say that Little Women and Good Wives were one thing when they were published in the US, but in the UK they were published as Little Women and Good Wives rather than like Little Women Part 1 and 2. Um, but anyway, I have read Little Women, Good Wives and Little Men and Joe's Boys, um, all of which I enjoyed. Little Women is obviously incredibly famous. I read it when I was about 15, 16, and I really enjoyed it, but I would really like to reread it and rediscover the story of these four sisters um, and their relationships with each other and their complex lives and how they change as they grow up. You know, it's really a coming-of-age story. I recently saw the Little Women film adaptation that came out earlier this year and I loved it so, so much. Um, and I don't know whether if I go back to read Little Women I will not like the book as much as the film or whether I just love Little Women as a story much more than I remembered. We will see, but I absolutely loved them when I read them as a teenager and they're definitely books I would recommend, especially Little Women and Good Wives. The next author I want to mention is Ray Bradbury. I have read two of his books, Fahrenheit 451 from 1945 and um, Dandelion Wine from 1957. I really enjoy Ray Bradbury's writing style. Um, the two books I've read by him are very different. Dandelion Wine is like a kind of coming of age tale, um, lots of interlinked little stories about um, a young boy growing up in 
small town America um, in the early 20th century, which sort of reminded me of like the earlier bits of To Kill a Mockingbird um, in that kind of like nostalgic tone about people growing up, but like interweaved with this one boy's like experiences growing up, uh, lots of other stories of the people in the town. Absolutely loved this. And then Fahrenheit 451 um, is a dystopian novel about a world where books do not exist and have been burnt and are burnt and people aren't allowed to read books. 451 degrees Fahrenheit is the burning point of paper um, and it's a truly amazing novel that I just thought was incredible and that has really stayed with me. Um, so yeah, definitely Ray Bradbury is a wonderful author who I really like and I'd like to read more by in the future. The next author I want to mention is Truman Capote. This is Breakfast at Tiffany's from 1958. Um, so I read this um, just earlier this month and really really enjoyed it. I enjoyed it sort of almost more than I was expecting to. It really 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 surprised me by how much I loved it but it's a kind of um looking back story um this man is looking back on his kind of life in his kind of early 20s I suppose and his friendship with a woman called Holly Go Lightly who lives on the floor below him um, and who kind of gets herself into all kinds of scrapes um, and lives this kind of like socialite life but is also really struggling. It's really really interesting and I really really liked it. I think it just has lots of things in it that I like, that looking back narrative and that kind of over the shoulder narrative where this book is really a book about Holly, but we're seeing it all from another person's perspective um, and we're seeing her through his eyes. Um, and I liked the way it like, depicted friendship in a really interesting way. Um, and yeah, I just I just really enjoyed it. Definitely keen to read more by True and Quoty in the future. There were also a few short stories in the back of this book, which I really enjoyed as well. The next writer I want to mention is Kate Chopin. This month I read her novel um, The Awakening from 1899, but I've also read um, this little collection of stories, A Pair of Silk Stockings, which I read last year. I love Kate Chopin. I really really love the way she writes um, and the way she explores the position of women in late 19th century America. It's just fantastic. The Awakening is just this like wonderful novel about this married woman who has kind of lived a very conventional life um, and one day realizes that maybe this life is not what she wants um, and that she's sort of been living in a dream. It reminded me a bit of um, A Doll's House by Henrik Ibsen um, and also it reminded me of what I hoped Madame Bovary would be, but Madame Bovary completely failed to be, and I didn't like Madame Bovary at all. Um, the Awakening was what I wanted Madame Bovary to be, and oh my goodness, it was so good. Yes, this was fantastic. Highly, highly recommend Kate Chopin. The next book I want to mention is The Homemaker by Dorothy Canfield Fisher. This is a American classic from 1924, um, and this is a truly amazing book that I really love that explores gender in early 20th century America in all the most amazing ways. It is about a married couple. Um, they live a fairly conventional life for the 1920s. The man goes out to work all the time. Um, the woman stays at home and cares for the children, um, but she is unhappy and he is unhappy unhappy and then one day there is an accident and the husband is left wheelchair bound um, which means he is no longer able to go out to work so he ends up staying at home um, learning how to cook, doing the dishes, looking after the children um, and his wife goes out to work and they realise that actually she is much better suited to the workplace and he much prefers and is so much happier living at home um, and they realise that like the roles that society has enforced on them are not correct for them and it's so good. I love it so much. It's so like feminist and wonderful and fascinating and just yeah a truly truly amazing book that I really really recommend um, and it's just absolutely fascinating. I did find the ending like a little bit rushed and I feel like there's more I want in the ending but I love the rest of it so much that I don't mind and yeah so good highly highly recommend it. The next book I want to mention is The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. This is a novel from 1925 and one that I really enjoyed. It tells the story of a young man called Nick um, and basically his observations on his neighbour Gatsby and um, Gatsby's relationship with Nick's cousin Daisy. So it's got one of those like over the shoulder narratives where Nick's telling the story but it's not really about him which I really really enjoy in fiction and it's a really interesting story and really interesting look at like upper class socialites in 1920s America so definitely a book that I recommend. The next book I want to mention is probably the um, latest book on this list um, and that is The Princess Bride by William Goldman which is an American novel from 1973. The Princess Bride is 
more famous I think as a film and it is one of my favourite films of all time and it was one of my favourite films as a child and it's always remained so it's very weird um, and really over the top and really like silly um, purposely so but I really really love it and I really love the book as well the book is absolutely hilarious it's a story within a story the kind of outer narrative um, is about this man who is talking about his favourite book of all time called The Princess Bride and then we go into um, the kind of inner story which is The Princess Bride which is this um, kind of fairy tale about this young woman um, and all of her adventures. What I like about The Princess Bride is that it is completely and utterly hilarious. It's completely ridiculous and just incredibly funny. There's just so many wonderful jokes and so much like silly writing that I just really really enjoy. It's just great fun. Completely ridiculous fun and I really really highly recommend it. The the next book I want to mention is Their Eyes Were Watching God by Zora Neale Hurston, which is a book from 1937. I read this earlier this month, I listened to it on audiobook, and I absolutely fell in love with Zora Neale Hurston's writing style. I genuinely think her writing must be some of the most beautiful writing I've ever read. Usually I'm not like one for a simile or a metaphor really, like usually I'm not one for super lyrical writing, but my goodness, like Zora Neale Hurston's writing is just completely like nothing I've ever read. It was so stunning and so amazing. This book tells the story of a young black woman living in 1930s America um, who comes back to a town where she used to live after several years away and she's telling a friend the story of her life and her three very very different marriages. It's just an amazing novel, really beautiful, really really fascinating themes and one I highly recommend. The next author I want to mention is Shirley Jackson. I have read two of her books, We Have Always Lived in the Castle and The Haunting of Hill House, both of which I loved. We Have Always Lived in the Castle has to be one of my favourite American classics. It is truly, truly amazing. It tells the story of a young girl called Mary Cat. She's living in this old house with her sister and her uncle. All of the rest of her family died several years ago in serious circumstances and Mary Cat's elder sister was blamed for their deaths. Um, she was put on trial um, and then acquitted but all of the town nearby and everyone um, judges her elder sister and thinks that she did it. So they live these kind of weird lives as sort of outcasts and we follow what happens going going on from there. It is a truly amazing novel. It's just fantastic. Like, it's just so good. And there are bits where you think that you know where it's going and then it's not going where you think it's going and it's just fantastic. I highly, highly recommend it. It's so good. And um, then The Haunting of Hill House is a kind of gothic ghost story um, about these various people who kind of come together to stay in this house as an experiment, this big house which is supposed to be haunted um, and we follow what goes on from there. I really really love The Haunting of Hill House. It's a really interesting book for being like one that could be a horror book but also sort of isn't. It kind of has a sort of Agatha Christie feeling to it in the bits of it are very dark but also bits of the dialogue and stuff are really light and just like fun to read so it's sort of also what I was expecting but I absolutely loved it. So I highly recommend Shirley Jackson. I definitely want to read more by her in the future. The next author I want to mention is Daniel Keyes. The only thing I've read by him is Flowers for Algernon which is a science fiction book from 1966 and this is one that I really really enjoyed. This tells the story of a young man Charlie and um, who has a very low IQ and who participates in an experiment to raise his IQ and this book kind of follows that experience um, and it's told in diary form so it's a really really interesting novel um, quite different to a lot of other things that I've read and yeah just a really fascinating novel and exploration of kind of science um, and the possibility of science um, and the limitations of science which is just a really fantastic read. The next book I want to mention is Passing by Nella Larson. This is another one that I read earlier this month and just completely fell in love with. It tells a story of two friends, Irene and Claire, who um, are both African-American, um, one of whom is very pale skinned and passes as white um, to everyone, including her very racist husband. And um, the book follows the friendship between these friends and all the tensions that map around them and their personalities and all of the people around them. It is so good. It is truly amazing. The ending just, yeah so good. This is definitely one of my favourite books of this year so far. The next author I want to mention is Ursula K. Le Guin, who is a 20th century American sci-fi and fantasy writer. Um, I've read a few of her books. I have read the Earthsea Quartet um, as well, but the book I want to mention today is The Left Hand of Darkness, which I really enjoyed. This is a science fiction story set on another planet, and a human character goes to stay on this planet um, where there is no gender, and they have no concept of gender, um, and it's about how that world works, um, and many 
many other things as well. I really, really love it and I highly recommend it. It's such an interesting um, novel, such an interesting exploration of gender um, and such a like wonderfully written book as well. So definitely, definitely one to read. Next, I have a playwright, Arthur Miller. Arthur Miller is an early to mid 20th century playwright who I really, really like. Um, so I've studied quite a lot of his plays at university and school um, and I've seen quite a few of them as well. Um, I've seen or read um, The Crucible, Death of a Salesman and A View from a Bridge and All My Sons, but my favourite is definitely All My Sons from 1947, which I just love. It's just so good. It's just such a compelling, powerful story of a family um, and how they've kind of been broken by the Second World War um, and it's just truly magnificent. I highly, highly recommend Arthur Miller. I think like the emotional impact of his plays is just fantastic. And talking of very emotional playwrights, the next writer I want to mention is Eugene O'Neill. Eugene O'Neill is one of my absolute favourite playwrights of all time. He is another early to mid 20th century American playwright. He's just fantastic. I have seen and or read um, five of his plays, The Iceman Cometh, Long Day's Journey Into Night, Anna Christie, Beyond the Horizon and Strange Interlude. But my favourite is definitely Long Day's Journey Into Night from 1941, which tells a story of this sort of broken, troubled family um, over the course of kind of 24 hours and how this day changes their lives. Um, it's just truly fantastic, very miserable, but truly brilliant and yeah, just so good, so good. The next writer I want to mention is Eudora Welty um, and the book of hers that I have read is The Golden Apples from 1949. This is a collection of interconnected short stories set in this small town um, and it kind of tells the stories of lots of different individuals within this town and then we see how they all link up together which is a format that I really really like. I also love the writing in The Golden Apples. I think it's really really beautiful and lyrical. This is actually another one that I studied on my short story module on my creative writing masters along with um, Paris Stories by Mavis Gallant and just really really fell in love with this collection so I highly highly recommend Eudora Welty. The next author I want to mention is Edith Wharton. I have read two of her books The House of Mirth and Ethan Frome both of which I really really enjoyed. I really like how she writes about like society and people feeling trapped by their lives um, which sounds quite specific but there we go. The House of Mirth is a book from 1905 which tells the story of a young um, kind of upper class socialite who is in the upper classes but doesn't have very much money and kind of feels very trapped by her options in life and then Ethan Throne um, from 1911 is a novella about a man called Ethan Throne who feels sort of quite trapped in his marriage um, and what happens when a young woman comes to live with him and his wife who changes their lives forever. It is another really fantastic book. Edith Wharton just writes amazingly. And then the final author I want to mention is another playwright, Tennessee Williams. I really like Tennessee Williams. I've seen three of his plays, um, The Spring Storm from 1937, A Streetcar Named Desire from 1947 and The Glass Menagerie from 1944. My favourite of these is Spring Storm which is a really underrated and little known play of his, one of his early plays which is one of my favourite plays ever. It's set in this kind of small town in the American South and it tells the story of these young people who are all kind of like trapped um, by their world. Uh, there's a young woman called Heavenly who is kind of torn between two men. One who she's not really in love with but who could give her the more like respectable middle class life she wants and then another man who she is properly in love with but whose life um, plans do not really line up with hers. Um, and then there is another woman called Hertha who is my favourite character who's a librarian who's just amazing and yeah it's so good. It's so emotional and like powerful and the ending is just amazing. I love Spring Storm so much. It is just one of the most emotional and emotive plays I've ever read or seen. Anyway, those are the 20 authors who I wanted to talk about today. Hopefully I haven't gone on too long this time, um, but please let me know down in the comments what your favourite classics are from, you know, the US, Canada and New Zealand and Australia. I would definitely like to read more English language classics beyond Britain, Ireland and um, the USA, so if you have any other recommendations please do leave them down below and that's it for now thank you very much for watching and i'll be back very soon with another bookish video